Sister Veronica this morning. I'm glad to be here in the house of the Lord. Amen. We have a beautiful day this day. Yeah. So in the words of my Aunt Sylvia, let's give God a hand clap. Amen. Let's do our call to pr- our Okay, I'm trying to I either got to read and I can't read. All righty. Okay, let's do our vision this morning. Let us recite our vision together. We are an inviting church that shows love by nurturing our members and empowering them to grow spiritually in God's word and reaching out to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Please remain standing for our call to worship. Listen up, everyone. God has given us work to do. God has called each of us before we were even born. It was God who named us. It is God who claimed us. The light of God's love shines in us. Let us shine God's love into all the world. Please join us for our opening hymn, Oh, How I Love Jesus, in our United Methodist hymnal number 170.
seated and we will recite our opening prayer. God of Isaiah, you are our God too. You spoke to the prophets, but your message did not end with them. There is still work to be done, and we pray to hear your call afresh. Help us joyfully claim our role as your beloved servants, knowing that you provide all we need to do your work. You walked with us before we were even born, and you continue to hold us by the hand each and every day of our lives. We pray with the confidence of those who have been filled with your light. We pray with the assurance of those who have called into fellowship with your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We will now have our announcements and recognition of visitors. Good morning, Hearts of Mount Zion. That must have been Jesus calling somebody. Okay, had to be. You know, I'm glad to be back home, and I'm glad to be up this Sunday morning. A beautiful Sunday, cold morning, but glad to be up here. And Wednesday we have our youth choir rehearsal. On Thursday as our prayer meeting. On Sunday, our Sunday school and our worship service. The Slido Little Theater is presenting the play Jitney by August Wilson on January 27th and 28th at 8 p.m. and January 29th at 2, February 3rd and 4th at 8, and February 5th at 2 p.m. They will honor Lionel Jackson at each performance. Please go to the little, I'm sorry, slidellittletheater.org to purchase tickets. Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, uh, the Slidell chapter, <clears throat> is offering a 2023 Embody, E-M-B-O-D-I. That stands for Empowering Males to Build Opportunities for Developing Independence. And it's a national program sponsored by the Delta Sorority as a public servant, which is a public service sorority. The purpose of the program is to focus on improvements improving the plight of the African-American man. Our local program targets boys in grades six through nine, and there are positions uh, limited. The positions are limited. The number of openings are limited. Please register as soon as possible to secure a position. The registration link, and I'm not going to give it here. You can call the church, or it's maybe in the bulletin that uh, you can check that out. K through five literacy tutoring program. Please see the flyer at the entrance of the church for more information. Do you, Pastor, do you have any other announcements? I do. Oh, I do. Amen. Amen. I got a couple of them, but I first got to start right here. All of y'all, y'all been in the new year. I feel like I just got here. <laughs> So I went and got I went and got my nails done all shimmery. I got I found my little hat because Happy New Year, y'all! You know when you start the year off in a certain way, in pain and can't do nothing. It's a different kind of it's a different kind of situation when you are resting and trying to get yourself started for the year. And um, I still feel like I haven't started for the year, but the first way to start for the year is to tell somebody, Happy New Year. So Happy New Year, y'all. <laughs> um, second, I want to give us um, an update that as of January the 8th, okay, um, for our anniversary goal giving of $35,000, as of January the 8th, we are at $29,005. So that is to be celebrated, yes. 
so that w that came from our anniversary, um, our giving levels that we have. Um, you still, if you still know that you are working on yours, keep on working on it. You, just because I gave us a total today don't mean that total can't keep on growing. So keep on working on it if you're still working on it. Um, but 29000 and and if you think about when we launched that to January the 8th, that is to be commended and to be celebrated, um, to help us um, cover some ground that, that because of just life happenings and, and upkeep of, bu of our building and ministry that we were continuing to do, um, it, it helped us close that gap. So thank you all for that. And then um, lastly, I just want to stand here and tell you all thank you so, 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 so much for your prayers, for the way that you have loved on me, for the way that um, Reverend, for even Reverend Avery, he's not here today because he got, he got called to, um, to do a baptism at another church today. Um, but for even Reverend Avery, who stepped in for me, not only for... Um, two Sundays, but also for the funeral for Lionel Jackson. And um, so I am forever, forever, forever grateful. Thank you to my dinner club. I'm gonna call them the dinner club, uh, the supper club, I don't know, but thank you to them who fed me each and every um, day. I have truly in this um, phase of my life, I have truly not wanted for in anything. I have truly um, been covered in love prayers. Um, <laughs> And, and several days it brought me to tears to be loved in this way and to be in a place that, that God saw fit for me to have to go through this here with you all. Um, and so I am forever grateful and I do not have um, enough words of thanks. But thank you, thank you, and thank you. Amen. I think another note that um, we need to make is our own Mary Rollins has gone on to glory. Our service will be Tuesday here at Hartzell, Mount Zion at 11 a.m. Okay. Any of you, any visitors with us this morning, please stand. We can recognize you and welcome you to our worship service. We're all family. Thank you. We will now read our prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our Old Testament scripture lesson comes from Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 through 17. But Moses said to the Lord, my Lord, I've never been able to speak well, not yesterday, not the day before, and certainly not now, since you've been talking to your servant. I have a slow mouth and a thick tongue. Then the Lord said to him, who gives people the ability to speak? Who's responsible for making them unable to speak or hard of hearing, sighted, or blind? Isn't it I, the Lord? Now go, I'll help you speak, and I'll teach you what you should say. But, Moses said, please, my Lord, just send someone else. Then the Lord got angry at Moses and said, What about your brother Aaron the Levite? I know he can speak very well. He's on his way out to meet you now, and he's looking forward to seeing you. Speak to him and tell him what he's supposed to say. I'll help both of you speak, and I'll teach both of you what to do. Aaron will speak for you to the people. He'll be a spokesperson for you, and you will be like God for him. Take this shepherd's rod with you, too, so that you can do the signs. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers and hearers of his holy word. Our New Testament scripture reading, please remain seated, will come from 1 Corinthians Chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. Paul called on, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother, Sothenus, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
both their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to you, God, always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him in speech and knowledge of every kind just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his son, Lord Jesus Christ our Lord. Please recite the affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. have our song of praise, Grateful, followed by the pastoral prayer and altar call.
from my heart is gratefulness. Sometimes that's the only thing you need is a grateful heart to open up every 
every place within you that you need for God to move, every space within your life that you need for God to do something. Sometimes the only thing that you have to be able to show God is, God, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for whatever you're going to do in my life. I'm grateful for whatever you're going to, however you're going to move, I'm grateful. And when you can get to that place, the outcome is no longer important. It's just the space of no, God knowing. That God, I'm, st I'm, I'm still with you and I'm thankful that you still with me. I'm grateful. I am grateful. As I stand here before you today, um, I'm grateful. And as I think about even the journey that I have been on in the last probably three weeks. And I sit here and I look at our sick and shut in list of names. And when you have to experience being sick and shut in, it does something to you. When you have to experience that. It's not that I don't want to do, it's just that my body won't let me do. That's a whole different kind of place that you go to with God. <clears throat> because you are trusting God to move you on through whatever the thing is and to give you the strength of God. To give you that thing that, there were days where I'm like, I got to walk from where to where. I know that's nobody but God that's going to get me there. There were days where I didn't leave the couch to make it down the, down the hall to the bedroom. I, I didn't, because it was too, too painful. So you see, when, when you go through something, it does something to you. It, it awakens something else. It awakens something else in you. It allows you to change the perspective by which you've been looking at, change the perspective by which you've been calling out these names. Because at a, at a certain time in life, you actually get to journey with somebody. And to know a part of their story. I am grateful. Mr. Anthony Alfred, Mr. Alan Bell, Ms. Lorraine Bickham, Warren Brookter, Willie Brown, Mildred Giles Collins, Viola Collins, Barbara Dorrance, Louis Dukes, Kenneth Fields, David Garino, Alma Harrison, Philip Harrison, Pulani Harrison, Tyrone Harrison, Desdemon Hart, Cedric Hartley, Annette Holloway, Pauline Javery, Isabel Jenkins, Marion Lee, Eugene Lee, Joe Malone, William Ordone, Arvis Porter, Marvin Porter, Myrtle Smith, Hilda Washington, Crystal Williams. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord God, as we come to you right now, thanking you for another day. Thanking you for waking us up this morning. 
thanking you, Lord God, for covering us as we have journeyed here to this church. And thanking you, Lord God, for those who are joining us online, who are having church at home. Thanking you, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit being present in each and every space. Lord God, you are amazing. And the things that you do, we could never give you enough thanks and enough praise. But Lord God, in the ways that you continue to move in our lives, in the ways that you continue to cover us, in the ways that you continue to be the doctor when we need a doctor, in the ways that you can continue to be the one that provides when we need to be provided for, in the ways that you continue to be the one that gives us strength when we are weak, in the ways that you continue to be the one that gives us joy when we are sad. Lord God, we give you thanks. Lord God, we give you thanks. Lord God, we give you thanks. And Lord God, from our hearts that are grateful, Lord God, <coughs> we come to you asking right now that you allow your Holy Spirit to be with us. You allow your Holy Spirit to sit with us even in those spaces where we brought in things today, Lord God, that we've been carrying, that we've been holding on to, that have some that we have picked up and some that have attached themselves to us, Lord God. But we ask, Lord God, that right now you come and you sit where we need you most. You sit in those spaces and you do what you will, Lord God. We ask that in this time. We ask that in this space, Lord God, because the the thing is, we want to just remain grateful, Lord God, to know that your will is being done in our lives and that, Lord God, it's you that we will have to have to give all of the thanks and all of the glory and all of the praise, Lord God. It's you, Lord God. And for that, we give you thanks. And so, Lord God, on this day, have your way, Lord God, on this day. Do that only which you can on this day. Move on our behalf. <coughs> Because, Lord God, we, we need for you to know that we are grateful. We need for you to know that we feel you, that we trust you. We need for you to know that. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will now have our ministry of music this morning when I rose, followed by our own Pastor Tiffany Postel with her sermon, See All the People, Fear, coming from Exodus chapter 4, verses 10 through 17. This morning when I rose you, I didn't have no doubt. This morning when I rose you, I didn't have no doubt. This morning when I rose you, I didn't have no doubt. I know the Lord will take care of me. Yes, the Lord. Oh, the Lord will take care of me. Yes, the 
shouting but <laughs> I'm too busy coughing and trying to get my catching my breath back together <clears throat> and I, I gotta be honest with y'all I am not 100 <clears throat> percent um, and my my doctor she cleared me and gave me permission to Slowly, <clears throat> slowly begin a normal routine, <laughs> but to listen to my body. And so, I want to shout. <laughs> but it is one of those times where your body won't let you. <laughs> so, you still listen to your body. Um, and I am listening to my body. And so... Um, <clears throat> Yeah, <clears throat> let us pray. Hey, God, it's me, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tiffany, coming to you. <sighs> Thank you, God. <sighs> Thank you, God. <clears throat> Thank you, God. <clears throat> so have your way God because God you already know in your son Jesus name we pray amen 
<clears throat> I have, um, for the last two Sundays, I have watched service, and I have indeed been in the comments. So if you have gone back and you have looked, you have seen me typing and, and saying hello to all the people, and, and, um, and, and even the first Sunday I, I wrote my notes because I didn't have any paper. And that was the Sunday right out the uh, first Sunday of the year, right after the surgery. I didn't have no paper. I went. I was just trying to carry my body around. I let alone anything else. <laughs> and so when I um, when I got up and I said, "Oh Lord, I got," I, I, I was prepared to watch service, but I just didn't have any paper. So I said, "You know what? As I sit here with this iPad open, I'm going to type these notes in the in the comments." And so I followed along and. Um, and I was thankful, and I, I, I followed along and, and, and heard about uh, it being time and, and, and how time takes on, um, these are some of the notes, that time takes on a much more important meaning once you realize that you have more time behind you than in front of you. Those were words from Reverend Avery. And um, one of the other things, this is the, this day and time is different and we struggle with change, but change challenges us in our sense of control. We face challenges, uh, possibilities in this new year, but it's okay. But we also just have to remember Emmanuel that God is with us. And then he talked about, I will be there, that Emmanuel, that even means I will be there I will be there is the very name of God and the essence of God. According to Martin Buber was the name. God is with us in all things. Just stick with me. I'm, I like to tie it all together because I'm finna, I'm finna take off somewhere. So I need y'all to get this. And so God is with us in all things. And, and, and the point two is this a, a time for us for some discernment and some study. And then he went on to talk to us about vision and visioning and, and, and vision statement. And vision is the ability to think about and plan um, the future with imagination and wisdom. The key question he asked is, um, what would you desire to have at the church, if anything? If you could tell the pastor, I need this at the church, what would that be? What time is it? It is time for us to face the present and understand that we don't face it alone. Emmanuel, God is with us. And then last week, he kind of uh, took you somewhere else, but it all went together where he helped us to remember our baptism. You see, he helped us to remember why we are here, why we have been called. And in that remembering our baptism, he he, you renewed your vow to serve. I was at home saying it right with y'all. Renewed your vow to serve. And then we were challenged to do what? Serve some more. And so today, as I stand here excited about this word and what God is doing, I had been trying to discern, God, well, where do you want me to go and what do you want me to do next? Right. What do we need in this journey of ours? in our own personal journeys, but then in the collective journey, um, journey of us being hearts of Mount Zion United Methodist Church in this community. Thinking about how we live and relate inside these walls and understanding that our duty and our responsibility is outside of them. And so that brought me to God said, you know where to go. You know what, what the first of the year, you know what, what to do. And I said, okay, God. And so I want to I wanna stop right here and let you know where we're going. And we're, on a, we're about to embark on a six-week sermon series called See All of the People. And so this is a sermon series that was um, put together by um, one of my friends. He is deceased now, but put together by um, Junius Dotson. And so Reverend Dotson, he was the past general secretary of discipleship ministries for the United Methodist Church. And so he put this together to help us to understand and build something within our church that helps us with evangelism. And so let me tell you how God works. God works in a way where if you have seen and know that we are about to get ready on Tuesday, um, 
a new Bible study. This book is called Soul Reset. This book is written by Reverend Julius Dotson. It was the last thing he wrote and got published before he passed away. So we are going to embark on this book. And so I said, well, God, look at you just lining it all up. So this is Junius Dotson. We finna just delve into all of the things and, and begin to see. But see all of the people um, is about evangelism and learning how to share our faith outside of the walls of the church. And so each week there will be a focused word. With that word this week, this word, was the word is fear. Fear. All right? And every week you'll get a new word, but I'll probably add like a tagline to it. But the question or the tagline this week um, is fears, don't let your fear stop you. Don't let your fear stop you. And so I know you're probably wondering what in the world do fears have to do with evangelism? But see, in order to connect the dots, we need to be on one accord about the definition of evangelism. Because that might lead us into the, to, into the direction of where there would be fear that would creep up. What is evangelism? You see, the Reverend Junius Dobson, he gives us four things. In those four things, these are, I'm going to read them to you. And then I will, I'm going to kind of talk about them a little bit, but I'm, they're going to be our, our focus. He gives us a what, right? Uh, evangelism is the good news of God's healing and saving love in Jesus Christ. All right? The, that's the what, okay? Then he goes to number two, and he gives us what is problematic about that term in regards to the who evangelism is for. Number two, Evangelism has become problematic, a problematic term for some in the 21st century, and negative images and experiences inhibit us from sharing our faith with others. We are fearful to share our faith. Why are we fearful to share our faith? Put a pen there, we'll get there. Then he goes on and he, kept, he shared the whys of the problem. The whys. Why? because there are scare tactics that go along with it, the coercion that people feel when, when you're trying to talk to them about God, and then bad news that has an escape clause has become synonymous with evangelism in some people's minds. What does that mean, Pastor? It means that when we get ready to tell somebody about Jesus, you, we, sometimes we are trying to scare them to have this relationship with Jesus. And, and, and we're not offering them an understanding that it's not a, I'm not trying to scare you to, 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 to connect with the most beautiful um, and, and, and journey of your own life, which is understanding who Jesus Christ is and why God sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins and the love that God will have. Like, I'm not trying to scare you into that because that kind of love is already yours and that kind of space and, and what God has brought you for him is already yours. And then number four, he gives us um, a supposed to be tried and true statement on the word. What, what does that mean? He, he, he says, number four, evangelism is always good news to the recipient. Amen. Okay, well, I don't know about y'all. Um, somebody who's experienced the most traumatic thing in their life is not going to necessarily hear you talk to them about some good news of Jesus Christ when they're trying to figure out and don't know where they're going to lay their head or what they're going to eat or what's going to happen in their life next. Uh, uh, um, they're, they're not going to be open to hearing some good news. They're, they're not going to be open to telling you, well, God has got it, and, 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 and it's going to be well. It's the same that when somebody passes away, and they tell you, and they come to you, and they say, oh, that God needed them more, and they're in a better place. Nobody wants to hear that when their loved one just died. So it's the same thing, that evangelism is a, it's, it's, it's good news to us who know who God is. It's good news to us who are living on the other side of something that we already see God and we already know how God will move, but to somebody who is just beginning their relationship. They don't necessarily see nothing good about it, about believing in something that and I, I can't see. 
about, about trusting and putting my faith that it is going to be all right. See, when you live through stuff and you know that it's going to be all right, it's easy for you to say that it's going to be all right. And when you, when you get with the right group, group of people who also have lived through some things and they know that it's going to be all right, then y'all going to have a party because at the end of the day, you know it's going to be all right. But see, the real question for us to ponder is what comes to your mind when you hear the word evangelism? Uh, uh, what emotions and, and images does that word evoke even in you? Let's take a look at this Moses call story that we read. You see, when, when you look at Moses, I, 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 I say, Moses, how dare you tell God I ain't going to do it? How dare you? Go find somebody else. You don't really want me. I ain't going to do this good. Y'all ever been there? Hmm. I see, I see we're being very honest in these 2023s. But the nerve of Moses is to tell God, no. Uh, my, my Lord, I, I've never been able to, to speak well. Not yesterday, not the day before, and certainly not now since you've been talking to your servant. I have a slow mouth and a thick thong, tongue. Say what now? God is saying, I made you. I don't need you to remind me who, who, who you are. All right, all right. But how many of us do that? Feel that we're not ready and we're not, you know, there's this saying that God doesn't call the equip, God equips the call. Amen. See, we got to understand that God is, God, when God come for you, God already know that you, God already know your short, the things that you could offer up as your shortcomings. When, when God called for you, God already know where, where, God, where God is going to have to step in. God don't need for you to remember. My God, you know my, my tongue is thick. And? You see, when you're called by God to do something, and then you try to talk yourself out of it, you can tell, see, uh, you can tell God then, okay, God, uh, go find somebody else. You, you, you tell God that there is someone better than you to do the job. Uh, hello, there's always going to be someone better than you to do everything. There, there's always going to be somebody that you can say, do, the, do it better. But I don't know about y'all. Nobody can put that Tiffany spice on it like I can. See, you got to understand about when God calls you, there's a reason why God is calling you. There's a reason why God said, for such a time as this, I need for you to go and do this. All right, and so then as we, we listen, see, see, when I think about um, a, an example in the Bible where another example, Moses was one, but then another example was Jonah. Jonah decided he going to run. Like, I'm going to just go, I'm going to go hide from God. Y'all ever decided y'all finna take off on an adventure? Thinking that God, number one, forgot about you, that God forgot that, I, that God gave you that, that, that God called you to that space? Y'all... Yeah, that that y'all thought that God was gonna oh if I hide long enough um God gonna forget and go gonna go and reassign it to somebody else y'all ever been on the run y'all ain't gotta answer that but but see how many of you know that God gave you the call on your life because God wants to use you that that you are special to God. And see, that's the thing with evangelism. Evangelism is just that. Evangelism is stepping into and remaining open to God using you and your story, you and your entire being, you and the light that you have inside of you. God wants you to shine your light into that space. God wants you to share the good news 
and, 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 and God wants you to, to, to be that person that helps somebody else to, to see that light. In, 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 in our text in verse 15, it, 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 it says something that I, if you read it too fast, you will miss it. It says in verse 15, speak to him and tell him what he's supposed to say. I'll help both of you speak. And I'll teach both of you what to do. Ooh, if I could jump, but I can't. You see, see, see right there, if you read that too fast, then you miss what God just did there. You see, evangelism is not necessarily about just you. Evangelism is about a both of you. Evangelism is about all of you. Whoever God is asking you to go and speak, it's going to do something for the both of you. It's not going to just be you giving. It's going to be you giving and them receiving, them giving you also something and you receiving it. It's a both and. And how many of you know that sometimes you leave your house and you're feeling bad and then you, God puts somebody in your, in your space that you's like, God, I ain't trying to talk to nobody today. I'm at the coffee pot, at the job, letting them not see me. I ain't here yet. I don't have a coffee in my system. Let them keep on going. And you know they always got a million things going on with them while they coming. I don't want to hear about what happened to them. But see that in that moment at that coffee pot, the God is about to use you. The God is the God that you know and love is going gonna, is gonna to allow you to speak something in that in their life even if it's one little smilla, one little thing it's gonna speak and you're gonna be the one to speak it yeah. <laughs> and when you speak it when you give it to them do you know how in times that you have had to give something away how you have felt when you have have, have done what God has said you see, God has a way sometimes of, God, I'm going to be obedient, God. I'm going to do exactly what you tell me to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to plant the seed. I'm going to give it away. And sometimes you ever been in a situation where God gives you the increase or shows you, the, shows you unlock some other part of whatever is next in your, because you've been obedient to what God wanted you to do. See, sometimes uh, we don't get what God is wanting to give to us because we still holding on to, haven't decided that we are ready to let go of, whatever to make space for what God is trying to do. I don't know about y'all, but in 2023, I'm giving it all away because at the end of the day, I want God to come back and I want God to manifest some things in my life. See, you got to understand that evangelism and telling somebody the good news is so that you can keep on giving all of the things that God has given to you. Give it away on this side so that when you get to the pearly gates, when it's your day that your name going to be called, you can say, God, I did everything that you asked me to do. I told God I ain't trying to go I ain't trying to come to you with nothing that you that you need me to leave down here. Yes. Nothing that you need me to give to somebody else. Yeah. Nothing that I want to every person that I'm supposed to be a part of their life, every person that I'm supposed to help them unlock something in their journey. See, the thing is, let's talk about these fears. Why do we don't want to do it? We don't want to do it because number one, some of us haven't even figured out how to tell our own story. We haven't figured out how to how to just share with somebody the goodness of the Lord. All right. I don't know about y'all, but God been too good to me. Yes, sir. I, I, and, and, and the thing with God is, God is continues to give to you opportunities to, to share your light. And it's your responsibility to say, God, I want the people to, I, 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 want, I want my light to go on. I want my light, I want to continue to be the one that even if I can't see it, because see, that's another fear. We fear that we're going to give it and we're going to lead somebody astray. How can you lead somebody astray by giving them God? Y'all scared that they're going to ask y'all to say the books of the Bible. It's all right. Tell them you don't know it by heart, but let's go get this Bible. Y'all scared somebody going to ask y'all to exegete a text. It's all right. You tell them, well, I ain't go to seminary school and I don't even know what that word means. And the fact that you know it. You 
see, at the end of the day, you got to unlock yourself from those. You got you to gotta, you gotta decide, I'm not going to carry this fear of not being able because somebody going to ask me a question about you, God. You say, okay, well, I don't really know how to answer the question in that way, but let me tell you what I do know. Let me tell you how I have seen God in my own life. Let me tell you what God did for me just the other day. Let me tell you how I ain't even really want to have this conversation with you, but God, I, I'm being obedient to God because I know that there is something that you and I are going to both walk away with. I'm sure of it. You see, but the thing is, we get tired of or, or, or scared of being in places that make us completely vulnerable. By golly, somebody might really see that I don't know the books of the Bible, but I claim to be a Christian. Jesus probably didn't know me either. But at the end of the day, what you're saying is, it's about relationship. I don't know every, every book of the Bible. I used to be able to sing the song and tell y'all, I'm y'all pastor, ain't got a whole degree. I know them, but I can't tell them to you by heart. I'm be like, come on, let's sit down and look at them. And if, you, if, if at that moment God want me to learn that song again, and there's a challenge that goes along with it, by God, guess what? I'm going to learn the song. Because guess what? Somebody else is learning it too. But see, when you decide that you're going to unlock yourself from the, the unknown, none of us know everything. You might not know nothing but to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. You might not know nothing but to say, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But when you decide to tell somebody, hey, you know what? I don't know what, I don't know how to, how to I don't know the answer to that question. But I remember when Big Mama and them was going through things. And, and, and we didn't know how we were going to make it. I remember Big Mama calling out, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I remember when we, we had to take a walk up the street to, to Miss Sally house. And Mama and Miss Sally, they send us children on, but we were so nosy, so we go and we listen. And we see them, we, we peeking around corners to see them. Um, they, they start singing a song. And next thing you know, Big Mama, she, she running across the yard. And this how she was running. You see, it's about telling the story. It's, not, it's, it's, it's about not being fearful to share with somebody, this is how I came to know God. When God puts you in that place, there is a power and a strength that is going to come from God. When you decide that I'm, I'm going to just give it a try, God, and I'm going to be authentic in it, I'm going to lean into this vulnerable space, I'm going to trust you, God. This space that we don't know everything, but we can say to them that, that that's the beauty with walking with God because we ain't got to know everything. Because what you don't know, God will fill in. Your fear creates within you a defeated mentality. It, it, it creates within you a mentality of, of scarcity. Um, uh, it, it creates a space in you where you, you are afraid to take a risk. Yeah, you, where you're scared to, to fall, to, to fail. 
It creates a space in you where you decide that I'm going to play it safe. I don't know about y'all, but in 2023, I ain't playing nothing safe. You see, when we understand that on the other side of our fears is our win. When, when you understand that on the other side of your, your fears is that, that place where you will feel most alive. When you understand that on the other side of your fear, when you give and release what God has called you to do, God will do more for you than yeah. if you decided just to sit with everything yeah. and, and hoard every little thing that God has given you. You see, the other side of our fear is where we begin to tell that story. And, and, and watch how God will use it to, to win souls for Christ. On the other side of your fear is, is, is your joy and excitement about who God truly is. You're sitting and you're playing it safe with God. When you play it safe, you're saying to God, God, I'm going to play it safe because this is only, this the part I can control. I don't know about y'all, but I want God to blow my mind. I, I want to be able to see somebody else's light bulb moment happen. I want to be able to know that I'm the one that I planted a seed that, that helped them along the way. I want to be able to be the one that when, when, when I'm, God didn't call me home and, and the people got to tell a story about me. I want stories to be able to be told. God don't, God ain't saved you. See, somebody need to hear this. God ain't saved you from, 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 uh, from, from hurt and harm and saved you from yourself. For you to sit with it. For you to hoard it. For you not to tell nobody about it. The other side of our fear is not being afraid to use your voice. You got a story. You have a story worthy to be told. <clears throat> Go start telling it to any and everybody who will listen. Because y'all, in 2023, that's how you will truly live. And you say, Pastor, well, what is my story? <clears throat> I'm in pain. <laughs> you see, your story is that thing that you know that God, only God could do for you. That car accident that you know, without a shadow of a doubt, I shouldn't walk anymore. That diagnosis from the doctor that you know you still shouldn't be here breathing. My doctor told me, I don't believe in having, a, you're not having a little surgery. Because anytime I got to put you under, is a surgery. I said, well, oh, oh, all right. Any time where you've been stuck and God got you unstuck. Any time you, you, you fell to your knees and, 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 and you didn't understand, I, I, I don't even have the strength to get up and walk. But you walked in here today. That time where you felt like you was in a pit. 
and it was dark and you felt lonely and God then gave you a light. You see, you got to go back and collect those. You got to go back and let those spaces give you life. Those spaces ignite the flame in you to even go and help somebody else be free. You sitting around asking, God, God, why am I still here? Hello? Because God said you still holding on to everything I done gave you to give to somebody else. Go free somebody. Go help somebody. And watch what that does for you. Decide today that you want to be on the other side of your fear. And that you don't no longer want it to control you. Because when you do decide that also, you will be free. Take the shackles off your own feet. Take the shackles off your own thick tongue. And decide that you're going to be free. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is the point in time where I'm going to open the doors of the church. Not only am I going to open the doors of the church for us here, but those who are also online. And then I'm going to open, open us up, the, open up the altar. For you to come. Nobody don't need to understand, know, or all the things why you coming. That ain't nobody's business. But for you to come and you to tell God, God, this what, this is the story that I'm ready to tell. And in this moment, I just want you to give me strength that every day I will tell it. And if you don't want to come up here because you still got those shackles on your feet, that's all right too. Bow your head at your, at your pew and you talk to God about it. Because even still, you want God to remove the shackles if you don't have enough strength to remove them from yourself. Ask God to do it for you so that in 2023, we are those people who are running around telling God all, telling the people all about it so that somebody else can be free. This is your time to say to God, God, I hear you. God, I want to be used by you. God, in 2023, I want to be free. The choir is going to sing. The doors of the church are open. And if you are online, I want you to put it in the chat. Because I'm going home to the couch and I'm going to talk back to you from the couch. But use this time and quit playing it safe. The God you serve got you. Claim your victory. Claim your victory.
is your grace, is your mercy towards me, your loving kindness towards me, your tender mercies I see day after day all forever faithful towards me always providing for me your tender mercy i see day after day offertory scripture together and then we are still doing off uh, our offering in COVID in a COVID manner so you will drop your offering off um, in the in the back um, and um, you will drop it off in the back and so um, I want to and I did not pull it up so let me see something Yep, give me a second. I didn't pull it up, but I want it's something that I want us to prepare for next week to do. Um, I don't have no money from finance. Uh, okay, let's see. Hold on. Hold on. All right, I found it. <laughs> So next, okay, I'm preparing us, okay, um, I'm preparing us um, because next week, next week, next Sunday, um, I would like for us to prepare for a special offering that we will do, okay, and that offering will be for um, Lorraine Bickham, who had surgery in November to remove cancer from her nose. Okay, um, and they got the cancer, but now she has to have a reconstructive surgery. Um, and they won't be able to have, do the chemo until the second surgery. She is unable to work and she needs financial assistance. And so I want you to pray about it this week um, so that next week 
we can we will be prepared fully to take up our regular offering but to also take up a love offering that we will send to her to help her during this time is that all right amen and it is time for us to say the lord's prayer so the lord is working our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever amen and i'm gonna count that as a confirmation that we are doing and moving in the right in the right direction and taking care of uh, one that is a part of our family and community our offertory scripture is oh let's see wait a second our sacrifices and put your trust in the lord amen and um the choir is gonna sing god's got a blessing um my two little acolytes are back there and then we will go from there amen, amen. Makes no difference what you're going through. You're gonna make it. God's gonna see you through. Hold your head up. Put a smile on your face. It's just a test. It won't last always. So get ready. Get ready. For your blessing. Your blessing. Get, ready. get ready. For your miracle. Your miracle. Get ready. For your blessing, get ready for your miracle. I know you've been searching deep down inside. Let me encourage you, it's gonna be all right. Troubles and trials come to make you strong. Keep on believing, you keep holding on. So get ready for your blessing. Get ready, get ready for your miracle. miracle. Get, ready get ready for your blessing. Your blessing. Get, ready get ready for your miracle. miracle. God's got a blessing. 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 Put your name on it. Put your name on it. Your name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With our name on it. 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 God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. Put your name on it. Your name on it. Your name on it. Our name on it. Our name on it. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. God's got a blessing. With our name on it. 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 Amen. See the little girl. My acolytes, please come forward. <laughs> 